much. Jane Logie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my contribution, I'd like to just riff loosely off the previous speaker and, um, and add a contribution to this House that may help fill that gaping hole that's going to be left for the country in the um, leaving of John Key. A contribution that will hopefully help build optimism in the country and restore our self-belief in ourselves and our potential as a country. I am, of course, talking about my members' bill that was drawn from the ballot last week to provide workplace protections for victims of domestic violence. And it is a bill that I would like to commend to all political parties who have aspirations to lead after the next election, and to all those national, many National Party members who are vying for the leadership of their party. The reason that I believe it, this bill will help all of you out is that uh, Coma Brunton research that was done this year on New Zealanders' concerns, at the very top of that list was violence in society. The top 10 concerns of New Zealanders, number one, violence in society, two, increasing cost of living, three, protection of New Zealand children. And my members' bill will address all of those concerns. That we also know that the members' bill is being supported by the warehouse, the Auckland Chamber of Commerce, many different businesses across the country, the Human Rights Commission, all of the unions, the National Council of Trade Unions as well as other unions, the National Council of Women and the 290 community organisations that are part of the National Council of Women, as well as, of course, the Women's Refuge and Shine. So this massive support for these interventions. The reason is, of course, pretty obvious, sadly, because we have an epidemic of intimate partner violence in this country. Every, roughly in 2014, which is the last statistics we have, every five and a half minutes, the police were being called out to a family violence incident. One in three women in this country are likely to experience intimate partner violence in their lifetime. This is having a massive impact on the lives of thousands of people right now and their families, and this is impacting on workplaces. This is costing, research tells us, at a very conservative estimate, about $368 million every year in lost productivity in our workplaces because of the impact of that violence and our lack of systems to respond to it in the workplace. So my bill addresses Order. that. Mr. Speaker. Sorry, I'm just talking to Dr. Woods and asking her to oh. sit down. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. That was very helpful. Um, so it addresses that concern and it supports businesses to be able to reduce the impact of that violence on their work colleagues and on their workplaces. And that we also know that from overseas research that 70% of people needing a sole parent support benefit are likely to be leaving a violent relationship. So this is probably the key driver of the need for people to receive income support internationally and probably the same in New Zealand. So if we want to increase productivity in our workplaces, reduce the need for welfare and the costs on the government because of that, and most importantly, provide victims of domestic violence with pathways to safety and protections in the place where they are most vulnerable when they leave. Because if they're leaving a relationship and they are still in work, then that's the place that their abuser knows where to find them. That is the place where they are most at risk. And significant research shows that women are stalked in their workplace, either by phone or outside that workplace. So it is a dangerous place 
and time for victims, particularly when they are trying to leave. So this, my members' bill, I commend to everyone in this House to make a real difference on an issue New Zealanders really care about. Wonderful, Jane. The time for this debate has expired. Call on members.